More than seven hours of talks between Russia, Ukraine, U.S., and the EU diplomats have been unable to make a significant breakthrough, according to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Let's get details now from our TZ Gorpiskanov. A roadmap aimed at easing the tensions in Ukraine, nevertheless, was drawn up, and it, it includes uh, the international community basically demanding that all illegal armed groups in Ukraine put their weapons down and vacate the buildings that they've captured. They also have to refrain from any further violence uh, or provocations. Uh, also, an amnesty has to be granted to all protesters except for those found guilty of capital crimes, and uh, the uh, current authorities in Kiev must conduct a transparent and effective constitutional reform Form, which would uphold the rights of all the regions, including the southeast. Now, it looks pretty good on paper, but the question is how effective would it be in real life, since there are many sticking points. For instance, uh, many of these uh, armed groups are simply out of control. Also, the gap between the southeast of Ukraine and Kiev is so wide right now. It's a question of even if this amnesty was introduced, would this be enough for uh, these people to put their weapons down? And also, uh, how effective would the constitutional reform be, knowing that Kiev was very skeptical of this meeting uh, here in Geneva altogether. In other words, would the current authorities in Kiev actually follow this uh, roadmap? There's also another aspect to the story which perhaps isn't so much uh, concerned uh, with Ukraine, but is more about political games we've been seeing between the West and Russia. For instance, we've heard from U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who blamed Moscow for uh, lots of the events which have been happening in the southeast of the country, uh, talking about uh, possible pressure and more sanctions and also what analysts have been saying could be a possible major problem uh, when it comes to uh, putting this roadmap into real life is that the southeast of Ukraine, these regions were not actually represented here at this meeting in Geneva. Artis, Igor Piskanov for us there. Now for more on the Ukraine talks in Geneva, let's bring in geopolitical analyst Eric Dreitzer. Uh, Eric, as always, it is a pleasure to have you with us here on RT. Now, the U.S. and the EU are still mulling over more sanctions for Moscow. At this stage, what sort of impact could that have? Well, I think that that's an important point to begin with because what we're seeing from the framework agreement that was uh, issued from Geneva, there seems to be an attempt from the Russian side and at least to some degree from the uh, the U.S. side to de-escalate the tensions and to uh, de-escalate the situation generally. However, on the on the other hand, you do see a ratcheting up of these tensions with regard to the sanctions, but not exclusively the sanctions. We should also remember that we have heard very bellicose statements from NATO Secretary General Rasmus regarding the deployment of additional fighter jets and additional NATO forces into the Baltic regions and into Eastern Europe more generally. We have heard very uh, bellicose statements coming from John Kerry regarding this uh, this trumped-up charges of anti-Semitism going on in Donetsk. We've heard very significant uh, negative uh, political and diplomatic statements coming from the West that makes a lot of people, myself included, question to what degree the United States and the West is really genuine in this agreement coming out of Geneva and to what extent do they really want to see tensions de-escalated? Well, you bring up a very good point there about uh, how much they really want this to happen. In fact, President Obama says that he doubts Russia will live up to its obligations in Ukraine, kind of putting the blame again towards Russia. Surely a comment like that could only undermine some sort of a political solution. Well, absolutely right. And it's interesting because that comes in response to uh, Russian President Putin, who said some relatively flattering and in many ways perhaps unwarranted statements regarding Obama and Obama's intentions. So I think, again, what we're what we're looking at is that the United States has been uh, employing a what I would call a schizophrenic strategy with regard to Ukraine. On the one hand, they're posturing as if they want to be deal makers, as if they want to broker some kind of a peace. On the other hand, not only do they continue to support an illegal government in Kiev and continue to uh, make very, very inflammatory comments regarding Russia and their purported role in what's happening in eastern Ukraine. Uh, and at the same time, we're also seeing that the United States is really quite unsure about what their policy is going to be. The visit from CIA Director Brennan, which uh, was made very clear to the, uh, to the media through back channels, was not only just in an advisory role, as the Western media has portrayed it, but he was giving 
sending assurances, quite obviously assurances, to the uh, the, the government, so-called government in Kiev, that the United States would back them in their so-called anti-terror operation in the east. So much of the conflict that we've seen happening in Donetsk and in the other regions in the east is a direct byproduct of this dual uh, U.S. so-called diplomacy, or what I would call diplomacy and subversion. All right, appreciate your thoughts, Eric Dreitzer. Thank you for being with us here on RT. Always a pleasure.